So since 2013, my body is connected to all my seismograms that allows me to perceive the seismic activity to the planet of the planet from the nations in my left arm. So every time there's an earthquake anywhere in the planet, I feel a vibration in my arm. And depending on the intensity of the earthquake, the vibration I feel is stronger or less strong. So now I'm here in Berlin. No. Okay, now I'm here in Berlin, but if there's an earthquake in California or in Japan, I will feel a vibration in my arm. So first, uh, I have to get used to feeling all these vibrations constantly, every day inside my body. But when all this movement, all this motion, all these vibrations, like became like an emotion, it's when I felt silent. It's when I felt that the cybernetics and my organism had united and given me a new sense, what I call the seismic sense. So we, we are used to see the planet in this way, like we study this in college, like how the continents work. But actually, on the leaves of the lines of the continents, there's the tectonic plates. And like, I uh, just learned the tectonic plates, like the tectonic the tectonic plates, and minor, 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 tectonic plates, and many, many minor plates. And they, like, the, these tectonic plates, they're constantly working, they are constantly moving, but they, they keep you warm. Every day, they shake and they release and create and create tension, and they create earthquakes. And earthquakes have always been part of our nature, but they're still very so in 2010, my childhood friend, Carlson and I, we uh, developed the cyber foundation. And if we create a cyber foundation, basically we create. One is to help humans to become cyber. Uh, the other one is to defend the, the cyber rights, like the right to be able to design yourself. And the other one is to promote cyber art as a social and uh, uh, artistic so the word cyber, since it was created, has uh, it has been used in many different uh, meanings. But actually, the word cyber comes from cybernetic organism. And it was going to define humans that modify themselves in order to survive in other environments. Actually, it was created to define humans that modify themselves in order to survive in a space. So we think that maybe we can, we should modify ourselves and to understand better Earth, the accounting Earth as space. But since it was going, it has been used in many different ways, like especially in science fiction. So in all the different meanings, we try to nail it down in three, in three different ways of defining the cyber. So we thought that one could be a psychological cyber, which is the feeling of, of, of being a cyber. Maybe most of you are already psychological cyborgs, like have this uh, psychological unit of technology. Maybe when you, your phone is running out of battery, you probably say, I'm running out of battery, instead of saying that your phone is running out of battery. The other one could be a biological cyborg, which is the physical union between the uh, technology and an organism. And the other, the other one could be a neurological cyborg, which is the modification of the mind through the union of technology and your organism. So um, I'm a dancer, I was studying choreography, so I'm uh, researching movement. So uh, while I was studying dance, I wanted to perceive movement in a deeper way. And I knew that uh, technology would help me, help me to investigate and research movement in, in a much deeper way. And then I started doing some projects, and the first project I did was to create a, a kind of blog that I would point of people that, that would tell me the speed of the people walking in front of me. But that, that wasn't good enough because I had to point of people and it would tell me the speed. And I didn't want to know the speed, I wanted to feel the speed. I didn't want to use technologies I wanted to have a new sense. So in order to do that, with a help of a friend, we transformed this, this love into a better feeling. So every time someone was walking from right to left, I would feel a vibration on my right ear and then my left ear. And depending on the interval of each vibration, I would know the speed of, uh, of the people walking in front of me. So uh, when I did that, I, I started, <laughs> I'm talking too fast that I can't think. Um, I did a project where I, I wanted to define each capital city of, of Europe by the speed of the citizens walking in it. 
So I realized that uh, there's this common movement sense depending on where you are. You would probably walk faster if you are in London than if you are in Rome. And I was very fascinated by it. So I wanted to define each capital city by the speed of, the ci of their citizens. And yeah, get like a movement dictionary also, like defined by the, the, the speed of the citizens and like the qualities of each city. <laughs> now, so after uh, investigating this for, for a while, I realized that if you, I turned the earrings around, um, I would, oh, I would perceive like the presence that I had beca be behind me. So this opened my space awareness to 360 60, in 60 degrees, because all of our senses are very focused in front of our bodies, but actually in the back of our bodies uh, we, were, we are very uh, dead sensory talking. So, so this, this, if I turn around the earrings, I would this will allow me to perceive the presence and if someone was getting closer to me or not closer to me. And actually this is a sense that we give to cars, like the cars beep when we get closer to, to some objects, but actually we don't have these sensors. And I feel that, maybe not in Berlin because you have big streets, but sometimes uh, if you want to walk faster and there's like people blocking you, and they don't feel that you like want to pass them. So I feel that like this could be very useful. That we all have, like, the feeling of, of uh, feeling presence behind us. And maybe if we all would have this sense, maybe new sports would be created too, because you would feel you would have a different perception of your surroundings. So after. So after perceiving all the movement that I had in front of me and, and around me, I wanted to perceive a more universal movement. A, a movement that didn't depend on objects or people. And then I thought, if I would be alone in the planet, what kind of movement would, would I be able to perceive? And also I realized that this, this, I guess as a dancer and as a movement researcher, you can either create movement or you can find movement. And there's many things that move in many different, thi in not in many different ways, but our senses don't allow us to feel these different movements. So, and then I was, I, I was thinking about the Earth, and the Earth is constantly moving. Not only it rotates, but it shakes every day through earthquakes, constantly. And most of the time, we can feel it. So I was fascinated that it's a, like a huge natural movement, but almost imperceptible. So I wanted to, to be connected to this movement into my body. So this is when I created the, this implant that, uh, that is connected to online seismographs and allows me to perceive the seismic activity of the planet in real time. So, now that I've been perceiving the earthquakes for all these years, um, maybe a good way to describe it is that I feel like I have two heartbeats, my own, and the earthbeat uh, moving inside my body in its own rhythm. So, for example, if there's a big earthquake in the middle of the night, I would wake up, so Earth keeps interrupting my daily life. It's like I'm having this connection to the Earth. And also, I realize that actually it's unfair that we have this bad image about earthquakes, because earthquakes have always been part of our nature. Maybe the bad thing is that humans haven't been able to adapt to it, because it's, it's a natural thing. But all this I see it as cyborg art. So I guess like a cyborg, the artwork of a cyborg artist would be the creation of a new sense. So I feel that now artists, we no longer need to use technology as a tool. We can use technology as part of ourselves and create new senses to have new experiences. So the artwork of a cyborg artist would be the creation of a new sense. So I see the seismic sense as my artwork, but it's an artwork that happens inside the artist. So I guess I'm the only one in the audience experiencing this artwork. So in order to share what I feel, I create external artwork. I guess it's like a photography, like someone takes a picture in their camera, and while they take the picture, the photographer is the only one experiencing the image, and then he decides how to reveal this image. So I guess in cyborg art, it's a, it's a similar process. So one of the pieces that I have to share what I feel, it's a dance piece that it's called Waiting for Earthquakes, where I stand still and wait for an earthquake to take place. And whenever this happens, I move according to the intensity of the earthquake. So it's a piece based on real time. There's no beginning or end. So if there are no earthquakes, there will be no dance. Usually festivals are very worried about this, but it's like the, 
the, the thing. So, so it's like a, a welcoming to the audience just that we wait together for the Earth to move. I see this is like a collaboration between the Earth and myself. It's like a, a duo. Actually, the Earth is like the choreographer of the piece, and I'm just interpreting their data. Also, another piece that I have, well, this is when I performed also in the streets in New York. I was inside this cube waiting for earthquakes. People had some interaction also with this. This doesn't work very well. Okay. Also, I have a, a, a sculpture, so it's a 3D version of my arm. It is actually now visit, uh, exhibited in Singapore, so visitors can touch the arm, and if, uh, if anything is happening, they will feel a vibration in the arm. And I consider this is a cyborg a sculpture because it's a, a sculpture connected to a living organism, which is the Earth. And I also do this as a percussion. I call this like seismic percussion, and I have two ways of doing this. One is based on real time, so whenever there's an earthquake, the intensity of the drumming is based on the intensity of how the planet is moving. So it's also, it's, so Earth is like the composer of, this, of these pieces. And another thing, another thing that I do, is I create a scores based on the seismic activity of a specific area. So, for example, this is a score of all the earthquakes that happened in Mexico for the last 50 years. So I went to perform in Mexico and I play in, for in, in 10 minutes all the earthquakes that happened in 50, in 50 years in their area. So it's another way to listen to how the tectonic plates have been moving in your specific area. Some other projects that we did with the SAI Foundation, it's like we, have, we created like this kind of, um, I would call it an exosense because this goes outside. But then we encourage to place it in the center of your body, and it vibrates every time you face the magnetic north. So it gives you, if you wear this for a long time, eventually you will gain the sense of orientation. And it's also inspired by like some sharks can feel the magnetic north and some birds, and it's how they orientate to space. <clears throat> also, another project that we did, we were in Brazil, and we had one week to create something with 16 experts. And we proposed, uh, like, I have a tooth missing, and Neil, my friend, has two tooth missing. So we didn't want to replace it with a normal tooth, so, so we wanted to have a different type of tooth. We wanted to have a Bluetooth tooth. So <laughs> in order to do that, we, like, Neil had two spaces, so he, on one of them, he created a light, so when he clicked, he could uh, put light in his mouth, so have alternative life. And the other one that we did, it's like, um, we get like this other type of communication with his, uh, he had the click in his mouth, and whenever he clicked, I felt a vibration, and whenever I click, he felt a vibration. And we both know the Morse code, so we were able to communicate words to each other by the rhythm of our clicking. So we call this a transcendental communication, because we communicate to, to each other without using voice or air or, or any part of the body, just the clicking of the mouth. And Actually, this could, be, could work on space because you don't need air, or could work for people that can move any part of the body just by clicking and knowing the Morse code. And I, I'm sorry. Now, oh yeah, this is uh, like how we showed it in, in Brazil. So we did like a performance, and Neil was in uh, one end of the, of the table, and I was in the other end. And the audience gave me a word to me, and I would click and send it to Neil, and Neil would write the word, and he would do the other way around. And it was a kind of very primitive demonstration of how distance dental communication worked. So uh, now that I'm, I feel that I'm a cyborg, I don't feel closer to robots or to machines. I actually feel closer to nature and to other animal species living in this planet, because I feel closer to the planet because I can feel that it's moving constantly, and to other animals and species because I can feel earthquakes like they do. So uh, Neil and I really think that we can get inspired by other uh, species living in our planet. Sometimes we don't need to think about science fiction or very artificial things. Like if we take a look at nature, we will think that some, some, some things that we think is very unnatural actually is very natural. Because some, some animals can fly, some animals can perceive infrared and ultraviolet, some animals can create light. So there are many things that we can get inspired that is in nature. And if we would apply these things to ourselves, our experience of the planet would be very different. 
also uh, maybe feeling as uh, being a cyborg is a it's a term of a bigger term that we call that we feel trans species. I feel trans species because I have a new sense that it's no longer defined by a human. And for example, my friend Neil has an antenna implanted in his head that allows him to hear colors. So for example, humans don't have antennas, but he has, and there's many other species in this planet that have antennas. So we feel trans species because we take senses and organs and we get inspired by other species living in this planet. For example, when Neil had to be uh, this antenna implanted in his head, uh, we went to a hospital to see if they wanted to, to implant it, and the hospital said no, after some of the very ethical committees they were talking, and finally they did, didn't allow him to implant it in, in his head. And they, they gave him uh, three reasons for not, like that it wasn't necessary, that it could be dangerous, and they were worried about the uh, bad image that the hospital would do if someone would came in as a normal human and then came out as a, with an antenna on his head. And actually, we feel that it's very uh, it's a parallel thing with the transgender community. The transgenders in the 20s, they were giving them the, the same three reasons, that it wasn't necessary, that it could be dangerous, and they were worried about the bad image if someone was coming in as a man and coming out as a woman. So we feel that sometimes is a, a bit of a parallelism. Now that um, <coughs> I also think, well, I also think that um, humans have been modifying the environment for since they <laughs> they discovered technology in order to be more more comfortable, in order to adapt better to the planet. They've been modifying all the time the environment. So we think that maybe. It's more, maybe now it's time to modify ourselves in order to adapt better to the planet we live in. Like now that I've been perceiving earthquakes for so long, I realize that if we would be more aware how our planet works, maybe we wouldn't have been building cities at the edge of the tectonic plates that are very dangerous places. So I think that now also is a very exciting thing. We, don't, we no longer need to wait for natural evolution. We can decide how we want to evolve, how we want, we want to experience life for our, um, in our life. We can design ourselves on, a, on our own perception. And just to finish, like my, my main project this year is to connect to the moon quakes, to the seismic activity of the moon. So uh, this, uh, I want to um, add two implants on my feet. So this will allow me, like my body will be on Earth, but my feet will feel the moon and I'm really looking forward to that. So we feel that if we use internet as a new sense, we can feel things that are happening very far from where we are. Our senses no longer need to be attached to our body. If we use internet as, as a new sense, we can uh, feel things that are happening very far, like in the other side of the planet and even in space. So we think that if we all extend our senses and explore a space, through new senses, we can all become sensronauts. We no longer need to go physically in space, we can send a sense and be connected to it and explore is another type of space exploration. And yeah, to finish, yeah, I just want to say that I think we, we are the ones who need to make sure that the union between technology and humans does not alienate us from nature and other species and space, that we, we are the ones who need to this who need to make sure that the union between technology and humans make us closer to nature, to other animals, and to space. Thank you.